Welcome to the first video in the set that will cover the section of IB Physics about wave behavior. The main topic of this video is simple harmonic motion and will act as the bridge point between mechanics and waves. I will be referencing material from the mechanics section of physics, as well as some trigonometric concepts from your math classes. So let's have a quick review of the necessary information. Kinematics. Make sure that you understand the concepts of displacement, velocity, and acceleration and how they interact and relate with each other. Displacement is the change in position from some reference point. Velocity is the change in position with respect to time. And acceleration is the change in an object's velocity over time. Spring and net forces. You should know what a spring constant is as well as how a net force determines the acceleration of an object or system. The spring constant is a measure of the stiffness of a spring. The net force on an object is the result of the vector addition of all forces on an object. Energy concepts. The idea of spring and gravitational potential energy converting back and forth to kinetic energy and the concept of energy conservation should be understood. Potential energy in both gravitational and elastic situations and their dependencies. Kinetic energy and its dependence on velocity of an object. Mechanical energy conservation, as most situations will be discussed with no non-conservative forces in play, though we will discuss the effect of them at the end. Mathematics. An understanding of the unit circle and what a sine or cosine curve looks like. A good place to start is with the concept of periodic motion. Sometimes when objects and or systems move, they repeat the same motion over and over. Imagine a planet moving around a star, or a ball swinging back and forth on a string. You should be able to see the speed of the planet as it moves around the star as constant. The pendulum doesn't maintain constant speed, but you should notice that the bob moves between the same two points in the same fashion. Any kind of motion where an object's motion repeats at regular time intervals is called periodic motion, and each repetition of the motion is called an oscillation. The time interval that a motion repeats over is called the period. It is denoted by a capital T, as it is a specific length of time. The other important quantity we can gain from knowing the period is the frequency, as denoted by an F. Given that the period is a length of time, it is commonly measured in seconds, with the frequency being measured in hertz, sometimes referred to as reciprocal seconds. The relationship between these two variables is that they are reciprocals. In the example of the planet, the period of the planet around the star is how long it takes to complete one revolution around the planet. In the ball on the string, the period would be the time it takes to swing back and forth one time. The frequency can be found by taking the reciprocal of the period as you can see there. These two concepts will turn up quite often in wave mechanics as well as modern physics and rotational mechanics. The specific kind of periodic motion we're going to be focusing on is called simple harmonic motion, or SHM. When an object is in simple harmonic motion, the net force on the object is proportional to the displacement of the object. This net force is one that is trying to restore the object to an equilibrium position, so it always acts in the opposite direction of the displacement. As you can see in the box bouncing back and forth on the spring below, when the box is to the right of the center rest position, the force on the spring points to the left, and when the position is to the left of the center position, the force points to the right. The equation shown here describes the motion as I just stated. The only thing of note is that it's given in terms of acceleration instead of force. But remember that net force and acceleration will have the same directional component and be related by mass. Take note that the mathematical way to show that the force or acceleration is always opposite the displacement is in that the negative sign is in the front of the equation. The lowercase omega, not a w, is the angular frequency or speed of the particular event and will be discussed more in depth in a bit. The two kinds of simple harmonic motion systems we'll be analyzing are a mass spring system and a simple pendulum. These may also be referred to as simple harmonic oscillators. Now let's discuss some of the important quantities necessary to analyze these systems. The equilibrium position. As shown earlier, it is the point where the system is not displaced from where it would be at rest. This corresponds to the bottommost point of the swing in the pendulum and the rest position of the spring in the mass spring system. The displacement. 
Much as in kinematics, this is how far from the starting point an object has moved, though in simple harmonic motion cases, it is how far from the equilibrium point an object has moved. The amplitude is the maximum displacement from the equilibrium position of the system, either positive or negative. This is just a very specific displacement, while the previous was a more general variable. The next three quantities we've discussed before and are a bit difficult to label on the diagram. That being said, let's continue with the period, which is the length of time for one oscillation to occur. The frequency is the amount of oscillations that occur per second of the motion. Period and frequency are reciprocals of each other. The angular velocity, also called angular frequency, denoted by a lowercase omega, is the rate at which the object completes one cycle, measured in radians per second. You should recognize the term radian from your math class as a measurement of angles. The equation to get the angular velocity is omega equals 2 pi f. The 2 pi in this relationship comes from the fact that the completion of one circle or cycle of motion is an angle 2 pi in radians. Now that we've talked about the two specific oscillators and what information we can observe, let's look at how we can determine the period for each of those systems. The equations that correspond to the period of the system we're focusing on are the following. Notice that 2 pi is present in both equations, which refers to a cycle being equivalent to 2 pi radians. There are only two things required for each system to determine the period. For a mass spring system, the mass of the object m and the spring constant k are the only factors about the system that determine the period. Likewise for the pendulum, the only things that determine the period of a pendulum are the length of the string L and the gravitational field the system is in, G. The amplitude of either system, or the orientation of the mass spring system in either a vertical or horizontal manner, do not affect the period. Now to discuss some things that you may have noticed earlier in the video but haven't been directly addressed. Simple harmonic motion has connections to both uniform circular motion as well as wave motion. We've seen the term pi show up in almost every aspect of this kind of motion so far, and where there is pi, there are circles. Let's take an object moving at a constant speed in a circular path. If we look at the y positions of the object only, it looks like a similar object bouncing up and down on a spring. It also works just as well for the x positions or using a pendulum instead of a mass spring system. This shows the connection between the simple harmonic oscillator systems and the motion of an object in uniform circular motion. Continue to look at the mass spring oscillator. If we were to plot the position of the object with respect to time and trace it out on a graph, it will produce a sinusoidal graph. The graph of the motion can be either a sine or cosine wave depending on where the object is in its motion when the time starts. The corresponding velocity and acceleration graphs will also be sinusoidal in nature. The velocity graph will have its maximum and minimum when the displacement graph is at zero. The acceleration graph will look like the negative of the displacement graph, again reinforcing the point that the acceleration will be in the opposite direction as the displacement. As with most systems in motion, simple harmonic motion has its own corresponding energy transformations and associated graphs. To start with, we'll take the simplest scenario and assume there are no external forces, so the conservation of mechanical energy will apply. In a mass spring system, the conversion is between the spring potential energy and kinetic energy as there is a spring involved. In a pendulum, the conversion is between gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy, as the system is partially dependent on the gravitational field. As with the kinematic simple harmonic motion graphs, the energy versus time graphs for simple harmonic motion are also sinusoidal in nature. The kinetic energy minima and maxima line up at the times when the velocity is also at its minima and maxima. The potential energy minima and maxima line up with the times during which the position is at a minima or maxima. The thing to take note of in these graphs is that there will be no negative energy values, so the graphs appear as sine squared or cosine squared graphs. Now let's change the x-axis to measure displacement instead of time. As you can see, the graph instead becomes a classic parabola shape for both kinetic and potential energies. For kinetic energy, the y-intercept should be the maximum point and will be zero at the maximum displacement. 
or the x-intercepts. This is reversed for the potential energy of the system. All of this deals with the simplest case of mechanical energy being conserved, but it's not too difficult to see what would occur if we were to introduce some non-conservative forces. As with all non-conservative forces, they remove mechanical energy from the system, which would result in a steady drop in amplitude of the system and all associated graphs. However, you'll notice that the period does not change, as we've already seen what factors affect the period of each system, so it would remain steady unless one of those factors is altered.